ladies and gentlemen, John Shepherd for Ringside Boxing Promotions in association with Prince Promotions and Matchroom Sport proudly present 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Welterweight Championship. Sponsored by PokerMillion.com for a great game of online poker and a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. Joining us for the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the IBO President Ed Levine of Coral Gables, Florida in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. He has appointed Fight Supervisor Frank Brunette. From the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge is Robert Smith. Our three medical officers, Dr. Chowdhury, Dr. Sararo, and Dr. Sharp. Timekeeper at the bell appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control is Mr. Harry Foxall. Our three scoring judges from South Africa, Pakamili Jacobs. From the USA, Donald O'Neill. And from England, Paul Thomas. The referee in charge of the action from Kent, England, is Mr. Richie Davis. They are the officials. Here are the contestants, and firstly, the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the red trunks, trimmed with white and black. Weighing in at 10 stones, six pounds, two ounces. Bringing a 46 fight record, 40 wins, 26 inside the scheduled distance, five losses and one draw. Coming to the ring as the former European champion and world title challenger from beautiful St. Petersburg, Russia. Please welcome Maxim Neskarenko. And now the champion fighting out of the blue corner wearing the white trunks. Trimmed with yellow and green, weighing in at 10 stone, six pounds, nine ounces. Bringing a 23 fight record, 21 wins, 13 inside the scheduled distance, one loss, one draw, making his fifth defense. He is the reigning and defending IBO welterweight champion from Nottingham, Kuzli. in the dressing room, give me a good clean contest, make sure you defend yourselves at all times, do as you're told, behave yourselves, good luck to you both, shake hands. Jaweed Khalik, who wouldn't be far off the genuine world top ten at welterweight, boxing in his home city of Nottingham yet again here in the white trunks and in a rematch with Maxim Nestorenko. And these two shared a pretty thrilling fight about 19 months ago where Khalik looked to be on his way to defeat. He was down in the tenth but found finishing punch a big right in the twelfth to win. It seemed quite improbably at the time. But it was a good fight, and let's hope this one is as good. It was a good fight, and he'll be looking to do it a little bit better than last time, if he can. But Nestorenko could well give him some more problems. Nestorenko, a former European champion. He's quite aggressive. Short, quick, can be quite awkward as well. Kalik, tall, but sometimes prone to counters over what can be a lazy jab. But he's shown his heart time and time again, Khalif. He certainly makes the most of himself. 33 now. Turn pro late. Well, he's looking to get that jab working. He's very tall, Khalif, and he needs to get that just porking out. Coming off a career best win as well, Khalif, away from home in South Africa, a five knockdown thriller against former world title contender Jan Bergman. Kali prevailing in the seventh round in South Africa. Good win, that. Now can he move on? This is a late substitute, Nestorenko, coming in at about a week's notice to replace Ena Julio of Colombia, who's a fair fighter. Well, 
that might have just upset Kalik's preparations somewhat. A change of opponent at a late stage is always a, something of a problem. Got him with a decent right hand, Kalik, and then blocks the follow-up punch from Nestorenko. He fights out of St. Petersburg in Russia. But these two ought to know each other pretty well, having shared 12 rounds previously. Can be a slow starter, Kalik. I've noticed that in the past. Yes, he can, but he's going to have to just pick it up a bit. Nestorenko getting some good right hands to the body and making that a, a target. The Russian a little busier, perhaps. <laughs> very upright, Jawed Kalik. <laughs> Slips the jab well, Nestorenko knows what he's doing in there. And he is three years younger than Kalik as well, who gets in with a good right hand. That's a punch he's very dangerous with. He knows it's the punch that finished off Nestoresco last time. He couldn't quite land it properly in that first round. Kalik, who used to be a taxi driver in Nottingham, his family actually still run the business. I don't think he does the driving anymore, so no chance of a lift home tonight. I don't, no, think, I don't think so. I think he's put that to, to one side, concentrate on his, his boxing, and he's doing very well. His career is going good. It was a great win over Jan Bergman. He's a fighter who seems to win. It's a happy knack of finding a way to prevail, but good shots by Nestorenko. Well, Nestorenko started the better of the two for me. Kalik a little bit slowly off the blocks. And Nestorenko did some good things, some nice punches to the body with the right hand and the left. And, you know, he's keeping out of, out of range. Philip Fonda in the corner there hasn't obviously heard about the breakup of the old Soviet Union. He's still wearing a, one of the old Soviet football shirts with the old CCCCP on it. Kalik in the white trunks here. Who holds this uh, IBO championship, which in all honesty, in world terms, is completely irrelevant. But Kalik is probably somewhere around number 10, that kind of order in uh, any list of the world's welterweights at the moment. A list headed by Ricardo Mayorga, the wild Costa Rican who beat Vernon Forrest twice. He's trying to get the right hand on Kalik, but just falling short with the, the punch as he moves backwards, needs to step in behind that jab. Hasn't found his timing yet, Kalik. He's getting caught with counters as well with that left hook. Nestorengo has got a, a quick punch with the left hand. I quite admire what Kalik has done, though, in the business. He's made the most of himself, hasn't he? He has, yes. He's, um, he's done well out of what he's got. Locking the left hook, keeping his right glove up quite close, Kalik, to guard the chin. Falling short with the jab. Needs to step in with his punches a little more. Just being beaten to the punch from Nestorenko. Missing too much, Kalik, in the early stages here. Can't find his timing. Did with the jab there, but Nestorenko came back with something of his own. He's got a better rhythm, Nestorenko. It was a good jab from Kalik there. This is a bit better with the jab here. He's measuring it. He's got the range. Neither three or four of them in a row, Kalik. Nestorenko's problem is getting close enough. Since he fought Kalik the first time, he's won three fights, albeit at a pretty minor level. You regard this as an opportunity to get back somewhere close to the bigger picture. He's done the land with a little bit more authority now, Kalik. He got him with one over the top there that just made Nestorenko think a little. Defensive work from Kalik. 
Hits is better. He's hitting more and getting hit less in the second round. Quite authoritative with the jab. Well, that's what he needs to use when you've got that sort of height and reach. Go use the jab well. Better from Jawid Kalik in that round. He was actually supposed to be given the name of Javed Kalik, but apparently there was some mistake when they came to register the birth and it went down as Jawed, and so that's what it is. Chris Aston there is having a successful time of it. Trainer on the far side. He's the man with James Hare and Dale Robinson as well. Well, I think he'd be happier with Kalik in the second round. Just started to get the, the jab working a little better. Ringside, stablemate, James Hare, one of the nicest guys in the business, and going great guns at the moment oh, at welterweight, but I do think they should put him in with one of the top guys in the world, or somewhere close to that now. I think it's worth the gamble with him. Yeah, time for a, a 